I have a story to share. Um, once upon a time in 2013, we took a family trip to Tucson and Las Vegas. Pretty sure I've done a flip of this journal. Um, I'll find it and link to it either above or below or both. But anyway, on, on this family trip to um, the Las Vegas portion, we stayed at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. And I actually, I highly recommend this hotel because it's all about art. There is art all over the hotel. They have cool installations. It's a very cool hotel. They have Fornicetti wallpaper in the closets for Pete's sake. <laughs> so if you like art, <laughs> you would love this. Great hotel. As I was researching things about the hotel, I ran across something called these Artomat machines. And the hotel had, at that time, a, um, a couple, two or three, or I don't remember how many, of these machines, which are refurbished cigarette machines. And how they work is you put in five bucks, you yank the knob, and out comes a piece of art. Right? Is that cool? <laughs> are you with me on that? I was so excited. This was like top on my to-do list is buy art out of the vending machine because how often do you get a chance to pay five bucks yank a knob and get a treat right in, in Las Vegas it's legal <laughs> so I couldn't wait to yank that knob <laughs> and yank it I did and out came a piece of art from I saved like everything um, it was from Kelsey Huckabee and what I got was these bookmarks that she made. She does, she stretches her own canvases and these are some of the offcuts from her stretch canvases. And she put them on a string and made little bookmarks out of them. So cute, right? And, you know, I was so excited about my whole experience. I even kept the, uh, the box painting on a string an upcycled art thing by Texas artist Kelsey Huckabee and this was the little box that it came in and this is what came out when I yanked the knob so I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. You know, totally fell in love with the whole experience. I really wouldn't have cared what came out. I just really liked the whole vending, retro mod, refurbished cigarette machine thing. It, it was just fun. So, okay. Fast forward four years. And this was just a couple of weeks ago. I was trolling through Facebook or on the internet or something. I, honestly, I don't remember where I saw it. I don't remember exactly what I saw. I think what I saw was someone, it must have been Facebook, because I saw someone um, maybe preparing their submission for Artemat, and they mentioned Artemat, and then that reminded me of the whole thing. And then I started thinking, well, I wonder how one actually goes about getting chosen for that. So I went to the Artemat website, I read up on it. They have very clear instructions, submission guidelines. I immediately printed it out and I sent off for their prototype kit because you have to make a, you know, whatever you plan to put in their machines should you get accepted. You have to make a prototype and send to them. And they have very, very specific guidelines as far as the size because, you know, these machines are made to vend a container of a very specific size and any variation is going to screw up the whole vending experience which for me was what it was all about <laughs> it's supposed to be about the art <laughs> but i just like the vending thing <laughs> in fact the um on the artemat website i was reading what their mission is and part of their mission is that this is a quote art should be progressive yet personal and approachable what better way to do this than with a heavy cold steel machine? <laughs> so they're snarky. I like them already. <laughs> so 
I sent off for their prototype kit and then started thinking about what I could possibly make to submit that would fit their size requirements, that would be something cool that people would like and enjoy, and something that I could do a lot of because they, they did say that you have to do 50 for your first submission. And, you know, I, usually after about five of anything, I'm over it. So, yeah, I had to put a little thought into that, which I did think about it while I was waiting for my um, prototype kit to arrive, which happened like in a matter of just a few days. Your shipping's really fast. And inside the kit, this was really fun. It had, um, you know, it had all the helpful stuff that you need, plus it had fun stuff. Look, they, they actually included this little journal. And it's, you know, it's got some blank pages, and then it's got pages for you to, um, it's got some tips and, and ideas and places for you to sketch out maybe what you're going to submit. So how fun is that? And then they also sent a pencil to sketch with and an official Artemat eraser and a sharpener. So, yeah, you get tools of the trade. You get some um, ideas for um, what to do. There's a You have to send these placards in. If you look at a picture of the machine, here's a picture of the machine, you can see that the art is stacked up just like the cigarette packages would have been. And then in front of each of the stacks is a little square, two inch square kind of advertisement for what is in that particular row. So you have to make that little two inch square thing and that's that's kind of your, um, uh, that's what makes people want to yank your knob <laughs> instead of your neighbors. <laughs> I'm gonna owe a lot of apology emails for this video, I can already tell. <clears throat> so, <laughs> you know, you want your little advertisement to entice people to yank your knob. And so they give you some um, suggestions, ideas for how to do that, which I'm really glad because that's the only thing I was really stressing about is that part. And then you get, you know, their little business cards. You get, this is a sticker. And, oh, you do get this postcard, which it says, um, Artomat machines are retired cigarette vending machines that have been converted to vend art. There are over 100 active machines in various locations throughout the country and abroad. About 400 contributing artists are currently involved. However, we are always searching for fresh work. If you have an artist friend who would be a good fit for our project, please mail them this postcard. You can visit the website at www.artomat.org. So just consider this me sending you this postcard virtually because <laughs> I have thousands of friends <laughs> who make art that would be perfect for this and I really do think that y'all need to submit your stuff is what I'm trying to say, okay? <laughs> so, um, this is in the kit. There are also some boxes. There were two white ones. I used one for my prototype submission and two craft ones. These are their, their um, official boxes in the exact right size that you need for your work. And they send you some acetate sheets, little strips of clear acetate, and then a couple of blocks. Now here's the only part that confused me, the block versus the box, and then what does the acetate go around? <laughs> And apparently I figured it out because they didn't email me and say, hey, you did it wrong. So what? here's what the deal is. These blocks are for people who do uh, two-dimensional stuff, you know, like if you paint or you sketch, you can do it directly on the block or you can attach it to the block as long as whatever you're attaching does not exceed the very strict size requirements. And these requirements are, are strict because... Any variation in those sizes is going to mess up the vending process and you know you don't want to be the one to jam the machine. <laughs> so you have to adhere to it. So if if you do you know a sketch or, or paint something um, on the block or attach it to the block, then you have to take this piece of acetate, you wrap it around the block, 
You have to tape it, you have to wrap it tight and tape it securely. And then this goes in the machine just like this. And this is what comes out when someone yanks your knob. <laughs> and if you do something that's not flat or conducive to these blocks, that's what the boxes are for. And you get options here. Plus, they also give you a template that you can print out and cut your own boxes, you know, if you're just crazy that way. I didn't really want to cut, score, fold, tape 50 boxes all on my own because it was a big enough chore just to fold and tape and construct the ones I got from them. So, um, yes, you can buy the white or the craft boxes from them. They're not that expensive. Um, let me tell you exactly. The prototype kit that I got was 20 bucks, and then I ordered, um, I decided I wanted to use the white boxes, and so I ordered the pack of 50 flat boxes that came, you can buy them already constructed, it costs more, or already, you know, put together, but I wanted mine flat because I wanted to decorate them. 50 flat boxes with um, 50 acetate strips to go with them. It was 15 bucks. You know, they're not making money on these. They're just offering them at cost for you to use so you don't have to mess with making them yourself. So I did that. I um, have my prototype kit and this is the um, 50 boxes and acetate. That's something that you get after you've been accepted. So you get your prototype kit first. You figure out what you're going to do then you make your prototype and then you send it in and you have to you know wrap it in your um, acetate and put it in the box and you know have it vend ready your prototype when you send it in and then they'll let you know if um, they think that you're a good fit or not and I'm not kidding like from the time I saw the um, you know got reminded about this on the on Facebook or wherever it was until I sent something in. It was less than a week because, you know, I immediately sent for the prototype kit. I probably had it in maybe four or five days. And then I used that time to figure out what I was going to send. So by the time I got the prototype kit, I was ready to send off my submission. I did that like the next day. And then it couldn't have been another three or four days after that because I sent it in a priority box. So it was probably maybe four days after that. They got an email saying, you know, yeah, we're, we're good to go. And then with that email, they gave me instructions for what to do next and for ordering um, enough boxes and acetate for my um, 50 that I have to make. So, okay, I know I'm going all around in circles. This is much more organized in my head, but if you go to the website, they explain it much better. Now, all that was left to do was make 50 of my whatevers and the little, you know, the little square thing, which I did finally end up, just this was my sample that part of the one that I sent to them. And I decided I was going to make these little vinyl notebooks. And I thought that they would be super cute because they're made out of, um, upcycled you know repurposed vinyl billboard vinyl and then the machines are the repurposed cigarette machines and I was just like oh that just goes together so well <laughs> so I started making these and I sent in two and so I thought you know two in each box would be good because they're small and um then I realized when they said, yeah, we're a go. Oh, well, that means I don't have to make 50. I have to make 100. So it, I was quite busy making these. And they're just little, these were two rejects. They didn't quite make the cut because, you know, they didn't, didn't pass quality control. But they're just um, real simple fused vinyl and stitched. <laughs> stitched as best as I can, binding, and then blank sheets. And then in the back is where you um, kind of, this is where you can promote yourself. You put a little, um, tell them where to find you, your email address, tell them a little bit about your project, what you did, you know, that goes inside your box. So I made these up and my boxes, 
I wanted to decorate because it's kind of, you know, other than the little, the placard, and mine says my name, and it says you get two different pocket slash purse size blank notebooks with colorful covers made from retired vinyl billboards. So that's what they'll see here, and you can kind of tell that you can see the end of the boxes, right? So you kind of want your box to, to be eye-catching, too, you know, so that people who want to yank your knob, I'm going to say that just as many times as I possibly can, because it really makes me laugh every time I do. <laughs> so um, this is what I ended up doing. You know, the boxes shipped to me flat. And I just laid them out in batches and just literally slapped watercolor on them. I used Dr. P.H. Martin's um, Radiant Concentrated Watercolor in Crimson, Amber Yellow, but it's also mixed with some Daffodil Yellow because I poured the rest of the bottle in there, and True Blue. And, um, I mean, literally just kind of slapped it on there. I've got glare going on. So the boxes are cute and they kind of go with the um, placard, you know, so it's almost like I got a theme going on. And um, my little journals are inside and then these are wrapped in acetate. So these are actually ready to scent. And I barely remembered to do this video before sending. I'd intended to film the whole process. And, okay, yeah, that didn't happen. But um, this story, the moral of this story is that uh, apparently Artemat will accept anyone. So I think you should just apply to be an Artemat artist. <laughs> okay, you will not make money at this. Yes, you do get paid a commission. You get, you know, they sell for... $5, and the artist gets half of that, $2.50, which, you know, that's not a bad commission at all. But the time and the labor and everything involved in doing this is, you know, it's, it's not a money-making venture, and that's not the goal anyway. The goal is to get a piece of art into people's hands and also to promote the um, artist patron relationship you know they're really big on making sure that you have your contact information on your piece so that um, whoever buys your stuff can contact you and they will I don't know where mine are going to end up I have a few sites that I'm going to request they said that you can request certain sites uh, but they can't guarantee that it will go there it's understandable they have to send your stuff where there's a need but you can check the Artemat website and see a map of where the locations are. And they're all over the country. You might be surprised that um, there may be one near you. So check it out. And even if my stuff's not in there, it doesn't matter. I just recommend that you go to an Artemat machine if, if there's one near you and pay your five bucks to yank that knob. Because <laughs> it's fun. It supports artists, and um, yeah, it, it's just, it's a very cool thing. And the machines are cool looking too, because they've got that whole retro mod deal going on, you know. So, that is what I have. I'm going to send these off um, tomorrow or the next day, and hopefully get those out somewhere. I don't know if they'll tell me where mine end up or not. I don't know much about it. This is my first try with them. So I really hope that some of y'all will... Um, Give this a try and submit your ideas to Artemat and see if um, you can become one of their artists and um, get out there and promote the whole, you know, putting art into the hands of people who might not otherwise even consider buying art, right? So that is all I have. I'll keep you posted on how this goes and, you know, if I find out more or actually have a clue or and then I'll, I'll let you know. Um, but for now, that's all the end.